Hi, this is lecture nine of marketing analytics. And for this topic, we are going to look into big data analytics with a concentration on what is big data, data mining and artificial intelligence. Now, the learning outcomes for this lecture are we want to define what big data is and the challenges and the opportunities within the sphere of marketing analytics. We want to understand how big data sources is stored and the difference between relational and non-relational databases. And we want to understand the application of artificial intelligence to support data mining technique. So big data in essence is basically an extremely large data set that may be analyzed computationally to review patterns, trends, and association, especially relating to human behavior interactions. And what this means for marketing analytics is that we are able to bring together lots of data sources to understand how consumer behavior is used for creating better marketing strategies. So the problem is in the current situation that we have way too much large amounts of data and from very many different sources. There is also a very inefficient use of this data to bring together and to even analyze it for some, some uh, to create models that are predictive and also useful. When the models are created, in most cases, there is a very ineffective translation of this analysis towards perfect uh, towards uh, effective marketing strategy that works. So what is the goal of data mining? We are trying to accurately report on the paths with the data that we have uh, 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 gathered together so that we can analyze what's happening in the present to create models to predict the future better. So we want to bring together many different data sources using many different technology and techniques so that we can use different measurement tools to measure the effectiveness of marketing strategy as well as create models to effectively predict the future. Now, big data sources can come from very, very uh, uh, different types of sources, but big data is so much that it is uh, sheer size of it is voluminous. The, 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 there is such a speed in which the data is generated. So many variety. There is the uh, accuracy of the data in some cases are very accurate, but in some cases they are also uh, very hard to define what's accurate. Some of the data can be valuable, but some data can be seen as junk. Uh, in terms of validity, some data needs uh, better quality management. There's so much of dynamism in the data in terms of its variability, where the data is stored from multiple platforms and its vocabulary and also conventional things as well. So where does these data sources come from? These data sources can come from a customer database, or in some sense, it can also come from the actual behavioral transactions that the customer does when they transact with the company. But you can also collect data from customer perceptions through surveys and interviews that you conduct periodically from the company, as well as social media, social mentions and trends. I will also want to say that data can also be collected from now a lot of variable tech uh, like your Fitbit, as well as your um, mobile applications, mobile phone applications when they use mobile app. Now, just to let you know that big data is useless to a company unless the company finds a way to meaningful, um, to, 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 uh, to find a way to uh, something meaningful in the data in a quick manner. Because there's so much of data to see through. So if they don't find meaningful patterns that uh, will work for the company, then the big data is useless. The company also needs to find a place to store, organize, and analyze these data because they come from so many different sources. And it must be easily accessed by any uh, person in the organization that needs it, especially the data miners. The data supports assumptions of the company that has been made before analyzing it. So for example, if let's say there is going to be a spike in terms of the transactions, especially if there are festive seasons, these assumptions need to be made and also for holiday breaks, as well as other assumptions as well. 
maybe a new product launch or taking into factors of uh, current events and social events. Also that the data is raw and unclean, if the data has been aggregated or has been tampered with in some way, then big data will be useless to the company. So what are some of the different technologies and techniques? The technology to gather the data online needs to be there, offline uh, as well with certain integrated uh, softwares like web crawlers or data uh, scrapers as well as data warehousing, face recognition, mobile and wearable tech. These are where all the data sources are going to come from and there must be a logical way to put all these data together and gather them in one place. There is also a lot of use and analytics techniques that can be used together, for especially for data mining. You have seen in the previous lectures that you can do segmentation within cluster analysis, decision tree, uh, targeting, perceptual mapping for positioning and market basket for association. And there are also many other things that you can also do, like logistic regression for model building. And in certain uh, later lectures, you will see sentiment analysis as well as text analysis. You might also want to think about data mining as integrating technology with the techniques. For example, artificial intelligence, blockchain, AI, machine, and deep learning and Internet of Things. These are some things that we are going to explore in this lecture. So what are these different measures? So looking into CTR and IR, for example, click-through rates and um, inquiry rates, using search engine optimizations from big data will give you the understanding of how consumers are reacting towards whatever content that you put out there in your website or on your social media pages. You might want to also look at uh, uh, primarily for social media uh, analyzers or social media sentiment analysis analyzers for the text. You might also want to look at higher statistical and data mining uh, analysis so that if you have the conventional regression that doesn't work, you might want to think about pattern recognition in your analysis as well. This is a way for the different measurements to gain deeper gaps in the marketing, which channels you uh, the most, gives you the most effective or even the least effective reach. And these are information that will help you to decide on what best to do in terms of changes of your marketing strategy. And finally, you must think about building a model that is test and retest and relearn that constantly uh, upgrades the model so that this model is a training model that tests the efficiency of a testing uh, model so that you can improve strategy and performance every time you rebuild a new model for predicting uh, analytics. So what is it that you need to do data mining uh, 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 efficiently? Well, first of all, you need a good analytics platform. And this can come in a form of either uh, analytics platform that does any data mining uh, uh, analysis. For example, you've learned Power BI. Uh, there is also SAS, Rapid Miner, as well as uh, Modeler for SBSS you definitely need very good and rich data sources. Now, these rich data sources can come from very, very various uh, places and making sure that these data sources are also uh, in some form and way is uh, accurate so that you can see through it properly. So social media, transaction and customer, put them together to create a complete story rather than just seeing things from one side only. You definitely need a good top-down or technological and training support. Um, management support is important if you're going to build a system to help you to do your data mining or even the storage for the uh, data that you're going to do for data warehousing later on. You definitely need the right talents. People who are data scientists, data miners or statisticians and a good combination of qualitative experts and digital marketers and quantitative analysis. And definitely think about a good fundamental data storage and strategy. Now, this is where I'm going to explain to you the difference between what is a relational database and non-relational database. Now, a relational database is basically a database 
uh, tables that organizes structures of data into fields and defined columns, whereas a non-relational database does not incorporate this table mode. Instead, the data is stored in a single document file using tags and using uh, the composites of the information that puts them together into a group. So what are some of the famous relational databases? Oracle, MySQL, and Amazon, uh, and also the um, SQL Server are, one, are some of these very famous relational databases. Now, a relational database, as Oracle puts it, is a means of storing information in, a, in such a way that information can be retrieved from it. So it is a set of tables containing data fitted into predefined categories. And these tables might include employees, customers, vendors, products, and other transactional information that is organized in some logical manner. It is used when you're working with highly structured data and all the systems runs using the same code, basically using either structured query language, or we can call it SQL, so that we can retrieve data in some structured manner. Now, the uses of this relational database, as you can see here, you notice that each database table represents a particular uh, character that is uh, part of the ecosystem within the database. Now, this database holds information of customers, orders, order items, and products. And why it's called relational is because Every single primary, every single table has a primary key that uniquely identifies every single row. And then this uh, primary key is then linked relationally to a foreign key in another table that serves as the connection between the databases. So this is how a relational database works. Now, for a relational database, you must always allow the users to link the information from different tables using these keys and indexes through the use of queries so that when you use structured uh, query language, you can link up these tables and find information from multiple tables at one go. And a query is basically a question that allows the users to pull information from database to answer the said question. How does this help marketing analytics? It helps marketing analytics professionals to target specific customers, store information about certain products, customers, and employees, and use segmentation to create groups of potential customers, especially if you're trying to figure out where are the best buyers or where are the best uh, customer segmentation and products that are being bought. What are the benefits of relational database? Some of the benefits is that it can store large amounts of data and creates easy access to information. And this information can be manipulated at any time, real time. It can be used to target and uh, segment specific customers, especially when you have all the tables linked up together. Example, if you're looking at targeted emails for your best serving uh, customers with the highest rank. In uh, contrast to relational databases are non-relational databases, which you can find a lot on the web these days, especially on social media. Now, these relational databases can be found on Google, Amazon, Facebook, but they are facing big problems like the constantly changing of data, decrease in development cycles, and massive amount of users. Therefore, to have a relational database online is really not effective, and that's why they have introduced the non-relational database structure. So the information that is stored on these websites are not stored in tables, but in documents which are created each time a new data is created. So it can be grouped into four different categories, key value stores, document databases, and white column stores, and even graph databases. Now, for key value stores, what happens is, this is the simplest way of looking at non-relational database. It uses an associative array, for example, a hash table, like the value, as the fundamental data model where each key is associated with only one and only one value in the collection. For example, K1 to the triple A, triple B, and triple C, 
and K2 to triple A and triple B. So unique key to unique value, a uh, combination of values or documents. The benefits of this is that it is scalable, it's reliable, and it's simple, simple and it's fast. Another type of non-relational database is the types of document store database. Now, this document store database uses more complex data structures known as documents for storage and queries, similar to what we call the key value, but this key now is paired with a document instead of a value. The previous one was paired to a particular value, but now it is stored uh, to uh, attached to an entire document instead. The benefits of this is that it's schema free, which means you don't have to really design or identify it using a schema. And documents can have different different structures, whereby any document, if it's uh, uh, attached to a key, then you know that as long as you know the key, you can also retrieve the document. You can run a fast write to performance and fast queries. Another type of non-relational database is what we call the white column stores. Now, this is a database that is similar to a document database that uses column-oriented data structure rather than a document column data structure. So the store data tables is in columns instead of rows, which means that if you want to look at the information for Bob, you have to look at the email address, the gender, as well as the age together. And then each of this will have its own value that is hashed together. Now, this each row can contain a different number of columns than the other rows as well. So then you will not see two different types of hash values that are the same and they are uniquely identified within the sphere of the white column store. And finally, if we look at a more uh, sophisticated way of non-relational databases are what we call the graph databases. Now, the graph databases uses a structure relational graph of interconnectivity of key value pairings instead of relational tables. This consists of nodes and edges, uh, relationships and properties. So for example, you will see the relationship between one main uh, value to another main value. And therefore you also get to see what is the relationship between those two uh, documents or interconnected pairs of relational tables. So what is the benefits of using non-relational database as opposed to relational databases? Well. There is a lot of flexibility when we look at non-relational databases because there are many different types of databases systems now that allow marketing analysts to manage data and how they wish. So for example, if let's say you have data consisting of sound and text and also videos, how would you then use relational databases? Well, the best way is to not use relational databases and use non-relational databases to store them as documents. The other thing is looking into re it's relatively inexpensive to create because it allows companies to store high volume of data like logs, call data records, meter readings and ticket snapshots and even other things as well as I just mentioned just now. It is affordable and they utilize what we call as the open source software or use cloud storage, whereby a company does not have to come up with their own storage and they can use Google storage or even the uh, Apple storage online to store all this information if they have an account and access to it. It is accessible because marketing analysts can analyze semi or even non-structured data such as email archives, uh, text analytics and XML files uh, like the uh, web pages and also documents. And finally, the scope of non-relational databases can crunch large data sets and help machine to machine data retrieval. Now, because of non-relational databases popularity, therefore big data now becomes even more important for marketing analysts. The big picture here is that relational databases are optimal when they're dealing with structured data. But when you're dealing with non-structured data or semi-structured data or unstructured data, you will need non-relational databases. So in that respect, 
Now we can see how data mining can happen in marketing analytics because now we know that there's so many types of sources of data out there. Data mining can be used to uh, analyze relational and even non-relational database data sources into marketing analytics. So the process starts by sourcing and analyzing these large data sets in different different forms and different types and different places and extracting usable patterns from this data. So then they combine the methods from statistics and machine learning with database management to predict behaviors and trends. And lastly, when the models are created, it allows marketeers to take proactive and knowledge-driven decisions. So what are some of the applications of data mining in marketing? Some of which that I'm going to present here, you would have already seen in your previous lectures. For example, promotions to identify most likely people to respond to a promotional offer using decision tree. Direct marketing, identifying prospects that most likely will respond to a direct marketing campaign using the recency, frequency, and monetary analysis. Interactive marketing, to predict what web pages an individual uh, assessing a website will most likely be interested in viewing. This is more like sequence analysis or like a click through analysis when you want to look at what a consumer does online or a consumer behavior online to a web page. We can also leak, look at market basket analysis to determine what products or services are commonly purchased together within a purchase bundle. We might also want to look at churn analysis, like for example, using logistic regression to identify consumers who are likely to drop a product or service and to shift to a competitor. And lastly, we can also look at fraud detection using regression, identify which transactions are most likely to be fraudulent transactions and to see if there are any uh, misoccurrence or uh, out of the ordinary uh, transactions, especially when you look at the beta regressions, which are abnormally high or abnormally uh, different from the regular times. Now we're going to look at some of the uh, techniques, as I mentioned to you, that facilitates data mining in its respect, especially in the age of big data. The first one I want to introduce to you is artificial intelligence, or AI as it's commonly known. AI is basically a simulation of human intelligence processes by computers. It starts by learning acquisitioning of information or the acquisition of information and then creates rules for using the information. And then it also works on reasoning after these rules have been created. It applies those rules to reach the probable conclusion, kind of like an if else statement if you're doing programming. So if something happens, what will happen? So one thing a good about artificial intelligence is that these rules can be self-correcting. If you set the rules correctly, then as it learns along through the process, it will also change the rules and new set of protocols can be derived from new information and data. The other thing I want to tell you and share with you is machine learning. And machine learning is basically a branch of artificial intelligence that is concerned with the development of systems that can learn from empirical data. Now, machine learning uh, notes that systems learn to recognize complex patterns and performs tasks based on these capabilities. It's kind of like doing your cluster analysis where you can redo your cluster analysis again and again and again when new data is added to the analysis. You can train to classify different types of transactions. For example, identify fraudulent transactions or emails and distinguish what is spam and what is not. The other way of looking at it is looking at two different types of machine learning, optical character recognition, or we call it OCR, which identifies symbols and meanings, and also natural language processing, which you will learn in your sentiment analysis and text analysis lecture later on, which we predominantly call NLP for short. Another branch is what we call as deep learning, aka the deep structured learning or hierarchical learning. 
Now, deep learning is the branch of machine learning where knowledge is structured as a form of a neural network connected to each other through a sense of directions and also connections, just like your graphs. The algorithms within the deep learning learn as they sift deeper down the layers of the network, progressively accumulating and triangulating knowledge that is gleaned from nodes into the outer layers. So basically, it tells you the interconnectivity of all the information and gives you what we call as a web graph to show you what is concerned with what and maybe to even tell you the strength of these connections as well. And finally is pattern recognition. Now, pattern recognition, you've seen quite a lot in terms of correspondence analysis, as well as logistics regression and also cluster analysis. This is a set of machine learning techniques that classifies raw data according to a specific logic or learning procedure. There are two types of learning, which is unsupervised and supervised. For the supervised learning, it uses training data to attempt to, uh, to learn and generate a model that attempts to perform as well as possible on the training data and generalizes it as well as possible to the new data. In unsupervised learning, however, it works without a pre-labeled training data to find inherent patterns that is uh, in the data that can be used to classify data instances, just like clustering does. Finally, another one that is very important to note when it comes to machine learning or AI is neural network. This is a non-linear predictive model that learns through the training and resembles a biological neural network of a brain or a structure. It, uses, uh, it can be used for pattern recognition and also, most importantly, optimization of this pattern. The application of this can be looked into computer vision and speech recognition, whereby you have a lot of information fed in. The more information that's fed into the neural network, the more it tweaks the network until the data or the model becomes more accurate. The classification of customers, example like identifying which are high risk, high value customers, or even the classification of transaction, for example, which are fraudulent insurance claims. Finally, we have the natural language processing. This deals with the ability of computers to understand what are natural languages in big data, enabling computers to derive meaning from human or natural language input. The application of this you will see in the, uh, the last lecture in terms of sentiment analysis on the web to determine how people feel about a particular subject, example, a brand or a company or even an individual. Now, a sentiment analysis, in short, basically, is the usage of the natural language processor and other analytics techniques to identify and extract subjective information from text and textual content, such as the consumer's generated media or their perception or their comments about a certain brand or even a certain event or person. This determines the polarity of these comments, whether they are favorable, neutral, or even their negative comments on the content and assesses the intensity of this sentiment. Net Advocacy Index is one of the examples of how sentiment analysis is used to assess how netizens feel about brand. So, what are the key takeaways of this lecture? Big data poses its own challenge because there is a large pool of data and there is inefficient analysis strategy, but also its opportunities are vast, whereby if we can have a way to understand this rich understanding of data on consumers and behavior, then we will be able to come up with good marketing models that will meet the criteria and the needs of the consumers better. The fundamentals of the big data is its sources and storage. There must be a way to find to collect all this information from different sources and also what is the best way to store the data storage, which you see the differences between relational and non-relational databases. And finally, artificial intelligence with all the different deep learning, machine learning, natural pro uh, language processing and also neural networks drives marketing analytics and other high level analysis to understand richer, uh, to, for, under, for richer understanding and analysis of consumer data.
the tutorial for this particular lecture, I would like you to search online and list different artificial applications in different social in different social media analytics, um, especially when it comes to marketing analytics and marketing strategy uh, analysis. I would like you to compare and contrast on the capabilities of each of these methods and how they can be combined to produce a richer data analysis. Next, I would like you to watch the video on digital transformation, especially the one on measurement, so that you get a sense of how uh, data analytics is used, especially online for big data. Additionally, do read up on this particular article on brand marketing, big data, and social innovation as future research directions for engagement. Then from this article, list down the ways that big data facilitates brand marketing and social innovation and identify examples from other sources for each item of big brand marketing or whatever social innovation examples that you can find from other sources on the internet. This concludes the lecture for, uh, for, for big data. The next lecture, we are going to uh, break down into two parts where we're looking into data-driven and digital marketing analytics. And we're also going to look at online digital marketing and digital marketing analytics, especially concentration on social media. Thank you very much.